Hi, I'm Greg Gorman. Uh, I live in Hollywood, California. I've worked as a personality and fine art photographer for the better part of 50 years. I'm probably best known for my work in the motion picture business. A few people know that I shot many of the movie posters that people have seen. Pirates of the Caribbean, Under the Tuscan Sun, a couple of Bond movies. Man in an Iron Mask, a lot of movies. And alongside that, I had a career shooting uh, a lot of high-profile celebrities, everybody from David Bowie in the big macho range, I suppose, uh, Brando, De Niro, Pacino, Betty Davis. Lots of work with Leonardo DiCaprio in the early days, uh, who was great to work with. When I first started taking pictures, which would have been around 1968, when I borrowed a friend's camera to shoot a Jimi Hendrix concert in Kansas City, um, that's when I first picked up a camera. And then I moved to California and studied at, uh, after I went to my undergraduate work at the University of Kansas. I really was fortunate because my career was actually launched doing a shoot for Interview Magazine back in the day with a young actor named Maxwell Caulfield, a Brit, and uh, I had access to him and Interview Magazine, Andy Worrell's magazine was interested in using him for a cover and I got that assignment. And through that assignment I got a connection with Interview Magazine, I was very fortunate. And in the day I shot probably 15, 20 covers for Interview and those pictures that ran in Interview Magazine really helped launch my career. When I got out of film school, I shot everything with 1K quartz lights and 2K softboxes because I couldn't afford to buy flash at that point. And when I lit everything, everything was lit right over the camera. Everybody looked like an interchangeable postage stamp. They looked glamorous and they looked pretty. But it wasn't until later, actually, until the late 70s, uh, when I was photographing Tom Waits for an album cover, that I started taking the main light off the center focus of the camera and moving it to the side, where I started creating a dynamic range between my highlights and my shadows, and I started to find myself as a photographer and find my own voice and that's when I started to develop my style between the relationship between my highlights and my shadows and my photographs. One of the earliest pictures I did uh, during shooting an advertising campaign for a small eyeglass company on Melrose Avenue for a company called LA Eyeworks was a campaign that was developed photographing high profile personalities, producers, directors, writers, street performers, drag queens. We shot a little bit of everything and they appeared every month as a full page in Interview Magazine with a tagline that read, uh, every face is like a work of art, it deserves a great frame. And ironically, it was Andy Warhol's magazine and at this point in late 80s, Andy had signed a deal to model for Ford Models. And he called me up and asked me if he would be a good subject for a LA Iwerks ad. And that photograph, which was shot initially as a commercial campaign, became probably my most iconic photograph. During the course of working in my career, I worked most of the time with flash photography. And about midway through my career, I, I started realizing I would really love to have a continuous light source. I was tired of working with flash and the continuous pop, pop, pop in terms of, of that. And I wanted a light that just could maintain itself and be on all the time so that I wouldn't miss those moments in between. So a few years ago, I was up in Toronto at Vistec Camera, and ironically I asked them, what do you have in an interesting continuous light source, uh, something in an LED that's bright? I said, the problem for me with LEDs are that they haven't been bright enough and the color balance has never been good. And they introduced me to Rotolite, and uh, I bought a Rotolite up there and took it home with me and just found it to be a perfect solution for my portraits. It allowed me to shoot a continuous light, it never got hot, I could vary the color temperature and the power. It was a really terrific uh, solution for shooting with continuous light. The big feature for me with road light actually is the availability of being able to use batteries so you're not plugged in. To me that's just fantastic and uh, you know I wouldn't say they're the quintessential light in hard daylight but they work beautiful in open shade and low light. They're stunning at sunset. They're incredible with window light and soft ambient light because if you have a certain amount of 
ambient light in the room, you can really kind of accentuate the picture and get the lighting exactly where you want it with like the Neo 2 to kind of hone in on the relationship between my highlights and shadows just to give it that little extra kick. And being able to control the color temperature to balance with the light that I'm shooting is really an excellent bonus.